Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching us from. If you do enjoy today's content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And when you do, please remember to hit the notification bell uh, so you get any notifications of any future content we upload. Um, if you would like to support my page a little further, you can do via Ko-fi where you can donate a little amount as you wish. This can be from as little as one pound and you can increase or decrease the amount you'd wish to donate to help me continue continue our work on the channel and all the links will be in this description of this video so without any further delay let's go to today's video enjoy how does your how does yours fit there oh we God. go i think we can <laughs> see each other and hear each other yeah, yeah. so paul and rick if you'd like to introduce yourselves and uh, your role at uh, stone market town just for those who don't know you i can't imagine some not many people don't know you but for those that don't know you uh far far away gents uh, rick andrew stone market town manager been at the club for eight years now and paul musgrove rick's assistant um been at the club will be my fourth season i think rick yeah feels longer but yeah <laughs> hopefully <laughs> uh, so you, you guys have obviously worked together for a, a long period of time then and uh become best of friends then we're very similar yeah we are uh, to be fair he's like the son i never had in the uh, intro before i hit record <laughs> we, we, have, we have the birthdays on the same day Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's unusual for the dad to have more hair than the son at that age. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, dear. So, I'll let you fight among yourselves who want to go first. So, how did you both get involved with um, Stone Market Town and how did it come about and how did it all happen then? What's the story? You first, Rick. Mars? Oh, cheers, just throw it over to us. Um, well, quite simple for me. Um, I'd finished playing. Um, I had a short stint as um, Walsham assistant to Paul Smith. And um, at that time thought um, that wasn't really for me. I don't think I was ready for it, to be honest with you. So I had a break away from football doing some scouting um, for Leicester and Crystal Palace. And then one day the, the phone rang um, from Rick and said would you like to come and just help us out I think that was the title winning season for Rick and I think they um, just needed a couple of bodies to help fill in now and again funny enough he was on the way to the airport when I spoke to him on the way to Vegas so I thought this is how things start it's uh, it's, it's not a bad <laughs> start <laughs> oh, so you didn't have no sort of um, interview in, in Vegas then mate you know nothing like that then no, I, I, I was, <laughs> I was hope, I was hoping that I'd um, get an invite, but um, that's only come in the last couple of weeks. I just feel like I've broken, broken through the barrier. <laughs> but what he means, Sean, is that he's just got his first pass off the missus. That's what he's mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What about you, Rick? How did you get involved with Stone, and how did, how did the whole journey come about? My my history goes back a little bit further. I mean, I took over and ran Stowe Under 12s um, up to Stowe Under 18s, then had a break, um, had a family, so kids came first. Um, and then my lad played for a Sunday team and I knew a lot of the boys and they asked me to help and I did. And... Um, there were very, very good players. There was people like Seb Dunbar, Camillo Douglas, Luke Reed, Josh Mayhew, Curtis. Um, I mean, it was just there's loads of very good players. And one of the lads 
dad who played for me, um, his son was playing for Stowmarket on a Saturday. Um, at that time, they weren't in the best of um, positions. And he said, oh, you know, would you be interested? But for me, Sunday morning's commitment uh, is turning up at 10 for a 10.15 kickoff, going to the pub afterwards. And obviously, Saturdays is far more involved. So it was my turn to get a pass off the missus if that opportunity ever presented itself. I had a chat with the club because um, I knew Neil from when I did the um, under-12s upwards. He was, I think, a year group or two year groups below me. Um, and just said to him, look, you know, I watched a few games. Um, I don't have a position with your manager, but, you know, if if at any time you're looking, you know, I'd be interested. Um, and uh, it happened a lot quicker than I thought. I think with two weeks later, I had a phone call. Um, just saying they decided to part ways with the manager and would I be interested. So I had a chat with the wife, spent the day thinking of it. Um, and then they offered it to me on a um, caretaker role, which I thought the bottom of Division One, 10 games left. I'm on a hiding to nothing for my first uh, done job. But I thought, take it. And um, the chairman at the time said we're not expecting you to get one more point but what we do want is to improve our discipline record and uh, I think we picked up 12 points in the last 10 games and improved the discipline record and since then he offered me the job on a full-time basis and um, it's been small stepping stone since to where we are now so um, it's been a long journey we're getting um, some plaudits now which is obviously nice uh, get some criticism along the way as well but that's just par for the course um, but as I said it has been a long journey and I've been on the end of end of 8-0 home defeats and 6-2 defeats and so I know exactly what it's about and it's something that keeps me focused for where we are at this moment in time. Oh, cool so when, when you joined Rick what sort of um, well you sort of touched on it but um, when you came to the club Rick and when you joined Paul what sort of state was the club in so i'm guessing for you rick obviously it was in not a best of states as, as you were talking about getting hydens and for you paul when you came in what sort of position was the club in then for you because it'll be interesting to hear the progress if that makes sense well if i go first then paul can fill in the gap so when i when i turned up they were getting crowds of 30 32 yep um and if I described it, I wouldn't say it was soulless, but, you know, if you get yourselves in a rut, it's hard to get out of that rut, you know, whatever that, that is in life, you know, be it money problems, etc. So I just think it needed a little bit of direction and someone with a bit of belief. And, you know, I've spoken to people before and Stone Market has had very good times in the past and been a big non-league club. And the potential was there. Um, but as I said, it was small steps. And to be fair, where we are now, um, I think we couldn't have done that. Um, I think it's more sustainable where it is now because it's taken that length of time. You know, we're seeing clubs jump quite quickly and then fall just as quickly on the way down. But there's some structure in place now. I mean, I think our average attendance last year at home was 305. Wow. So okay. It shows where we're coming from. Um, and that's one of my proudest things, it's an achievement um, of engaging with the community. And as you know, if you, if you are, you know, people enjoy what they're watching and there is an element of success there, um, you're going to get people to come. It's just the way it is. And, and what we need to do is make sure we sustain that as long as possible. And, and the club now, um, from when I first joined, the committee are now far more proactive. Um, things going, loads of things going behind the scenes uh, and there's a real progress there. And so when my day comes to hand over to Mr Musgrove for him to carry the torch, um, hopefully I've left it in a far better place than when I arrived. No, I'm sure everything will be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. So for yourself, Paul, when you came to the club, what sort of league were they in? What was the situation like? Um, what, how was it for you then, mate, really? Yeah, well, when, like I said, when I rang and said, would you know, just come and fill in for us as and when, and they were in fellow number one. Um, I'd, I'd had previous encounters with Stonemarket just playing against them, and I'd always, it was a 
it was a place that I always thought, like I said, it, I knew the history because of the, the non-league scene. Um, so it always had the potential. But then when uh, I spoke to Rick in the summer, I'd actually did a little bit, didn't I, Rick, towards the end of that win, title winning season, instead of playing, yeah. Rick said, would you just go and watch a couple of games for us against Coggershaw and just see what they're about? Um, and then we just carried on talking from that point onwards, really. And I, it was really, to be fair, I only spoke to, to Rick. I wasn't really speaking to committee or anything, but it was Rick that sold us and said to us, look, this is where I want to go and this is, this is the direction we're going in. And these are the plans that, the, that they had in place. So um, I would never have joined if the ambition wasn't there and it would just excited me as a project to obviously to to move on to the next thing after playing and that's sort of slowly speaking to everybody around the club it's quite it's so infectious um it just sort of drives you forward every day to make sure you're doing the right thing to, to help them as well cool well, well, I, well i must admit you know it's interesting how you both join obviously at different times and the different transition stages etc etc but um you know, with seven years and four years under your belts, what do you feel Stonemark as a club do best, would you say? With what? Sorry, Sean, I missed What that. would you say Stonemark as a club do best? Um, for me, I think the amount of times I've heard that somebody has visited Stonemark for the first time and um, were um, not bowled over, but were pleasantly surprised at the warm welcome they had and how the fans engage with with people who haven't been at the club um so for me it is a you know it is a massive family club um you see kids running around which is great um so i think they do that really well and i just think um the supporters are honest as the day is long you know if, if we've played well they'll tell us if it's not been great they'll tell us but the one thing they don't do, they never get on the players' backs. Not in the seven years that I've been there. <laughs> and they've seen some poor performances in the early days. But um, they could always see we're trying to do or play the right way. And um, as I say, they're just an honest bunch. And, and as Muzzy said, um, when you walk into the bar afterwards and you realise that for some of these, it's um, you know the, the thing they look forward to most on the weekend with that becomes a responsibility to make sure you're doing your job properly. Yeah, and that's sure. why we, Yeah, and that's why we, you know, do what we do and that's why we enjoy it. And um, it's, for me, it's uh, me personally giving satisfaction to others. It's far more rewarding than personal gain. Sure. And I guess you pretty much echo that, Paul, really. I do, yeah. It's really, like, like I said with Rick, it's the, it's the engaging everybody, um, enjoy it, making sure people are enjoying their match day experiences. And then just like I say, seeing youngsters run around and, and getting involved with the players and the players really embrace it as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the whole thing really, it's uh, standards as well. The standards on and off the pitch seem to be, uh, seem to match each other, which is brilliant. Cool. Well, you know, on the pitch, you know, unfortunately before lockdown, the uh, league table didn't lie. I think you were 16 points or so roughly clear at the top of uh, second place Norwich United. Obviously, uh, through no fault of anybody's, coronavirus hit. And um, I should imagine, um, obviously, I guess you obviously you guys obviously felt uh, Rob Dot was, was going to be a guaranteed promotion with all respect to everybody else. Certainly. Yeah, it was it sort of the first two weeks I, I was gutted by it if, if honest and I think like I said you know we, we all spoke and we were wondering maybe will it be lifted and, and the time went on and I think as time went on we actually realised that there was more to life than, than the fellow nun league and us running away with it and you know it doesn't doesn't sort of sit well that we were that, that far in front and we were you know our noses weren't far away but at the same time um, there was so much going on in the world. It was sort of, you know, it wasn't really that important. Come, come, sort of a month later. Sure. And what about what about yourself, Rick? How did you sort of feel about, you know, the unfortunate abrupt end to the football life? It it was. Um, I, 
if you can't control things, then I don't tend to worry about them too much. But I mean, from a from a side where we had investors putting money in, and you think they've invested quite a bit of money, and that's just been written off, they're the ones I feel for because you know it's easy for us all to say let's go again and let's do this, etc. But people that you know your sponsors and all that, they all you know back you, and for that to be taken away was very hard on them. Um, you know, from our point of view, as I said, it's we had hope maybe they did points per game. We're seventy five percent way through the season. You can see teams at the bottom who weren't keen for that, and I totally understand why. You get teams in the middle who probably don't care because they're neither going up or down. Um, and obviously, teams at the top are obviously fighting for what they think is justifiably um, what they deserve. But you know, it's um, it's another bump in the road. Um, that we have to overcome and it's gone and um, we're focused on re regrouping and trying to uh, replicate what we did last season. Sure, uh, I mean obviously you know I, I guess the lads and obviously every club was obviously uh, disappointed as you obviously and naturally would be. Um, for yourselves you know obviously being, being in charge, was it, how did you sort of uh, you know, did you have to pick the lads up at any point or did you have to sort of put an arm around the shoulder? Was it a case of the boys have got to finish business, they're around to go again? You know, how hard was it for you guys as managers to have that to happen to you, basically? Well, um, I, don't, I didn't think it was that hard because... Um, I think that said everybody had stuff going on and then when you regroup, um, I think the lads are that professional and determined and they've got that desire to think, right, okay, what what can we do now um, to make it right? So since then, um, again, we've stayed together as a group every week by Zoom. Um, uh, we've got we're lucky enough to have Curtly Williams who does our strength and conditioning. So he's been doing that along with um, various other sessions. And to be honest with you, I, I feel like it's got stronger. I think the lads are closer. Um, I think there's a, a quiet a determination on and off the pitch. And like I say, as a management group, we had lots of conversations of look, how could we improve. Um, rather than just sitting on your laurels and going, okay, well, this, you know, we were sitting in this position. We've actually sat back and we've looked at um, previous team sheets, talked about various games where we thought we could improve. So it's actually a really good reflective period for us, I think, and, and hopefully um, it will only make us stronger. Cool. Well, I, I suppose really, you know, listening to you, you guys speak and the attitude, the players and the club, etc. I suppose it potentially could work in your favour that the boys are even more hungry for unfinished business and you never know, dare I say, you can even be even more lethal on the pitch on and off and in front of a goal than you were in the season just gone. I do think from the player's perspective there is an element of that, that the job has obviously not been finished through nobody's fault and there is a real determination to make sure that we give it as good a go as we did last season and um, hope, hopefully see hopefully see where it brings us. But it won't be, I can guarantee it won't be for a lack of commitment or effort because, as Muzzy said earlier, what the boys have done over the last three months, you know, weekly Zoom calls, doing these exercises, putting bike rides up, runs up, literally every day. I can't fault them. And, and there's, if anything, the group was quite new last year. You know, we had a lot of new faces. Um, we haven't made many changes this year, so it, it will be, you know, stronger group from that perspective. Everyone knows me and Muzzy and the, and the management team, what we expect. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. I think 5th of September has been uh, touted as a possible start date. I think that may have even been confirmed now. So now it's... Um, Touch and doubling up on training and getting the friendlies going, and I think everyone can't wait to, to wait to get back. Excellent. So, with regards to um, we all start going again. I understand. Is it correct that um, four players have left Stowe from, from memory? Uh, one, two. I think there's five now. Right. Um, so we lost um, 
Dean Bowditch, uh, Callum Robinson, Leon Otley Gooch. Those two went, the last two went to Felixstowe. Um, Dave Cowley's um, joined a team closer to home, and Matt Blake, uh, I believe, has gone to Wanderers. And um, obviously, I guess you, you both have obviously got your targets in mind. You want to get in as soon as possible before the season starts. Then, obviously, yeah, we've we've got we've got three on board at the moment, um, with a possible another one to come. Um, but we're just, you know, just seeing how that goes. Um, the the players that we've identified have been training with us. They're enjoying it. Um, they fitted extremely well into the group. Um, so yeah. Um, obviously, with there's tough times out there for all clubs, um, and we're seeing that more. You know, you see more social media about clubs can't afford, and players are going to have to be more reasonable. Hopefully, they will be. Um, and uh, I think I think it'll be a tough league because I I generally think you might get players from higher above where the money's not there. Might think okay, I'll go play for a lower league, less commitment. Um, they might get time. less money but less travelling. So we'll see. Yeah, would you sort of echo that, Paul? Obviously, really. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a struggle to get uh, Gareth Bale across the line, but um, we're working on <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, that 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 that'll, that'll please Russell at Berry um, <laughs> just to get another nibble. Um, no, we, um, yeah. At the end of the day, we've um, we've just got Rick's really good. Um, it's one of his massive strengths with, with getting players in and making them buy into what we're doing because obviously of how genuine he is. So. It, Again, it's just people being realistic and making sure we get the right characters that fit, fit what we're trying to do. And um, again, like I said, we did that with the recruitment we did last summer and, and going forward, hopefully we can um, just get the final pieces of the jigsaw through the door. Excellent. Well, you know, I, Stowe have never been no strangers to attracting, you know, big, big players, so to speak. You know, it seems to be uh, well in your uh, tr tradition. But... Um, just for those who are intrigued, when you have a player like Dean Bowditch, how do you get someone like that to, you know, come and come and play for you, boys? I mean, how did without getting into obviously all the you know all the details, how did that sort of little journey start start for you and Dean then? Miles? Well, it's a, I think it came from a two pronged attack, really, didn't it? Because um, Scott Mitchell at Ipswich, I think he rang Rick and then he rang myself and his good friends with Dean. Um, and I think then Rick, you made the phone call, didn't you? Yeah, um, but he'd also, Dean had also spoken to Jack Ainsley. Hadn't Jack you? Ainsley, yeah, as well. Yeah. So it, it, it came from a couple of directions and, and sort of we sort of had a chat, didn't we, Rick? And um, and then, to be honest with you, quite, I left it to Rick to uh, to crack on with it. We 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 met him, top lad. Um, you know, I explained everything to him at the club. Obviously, he's, he's coming out of a pro club, so um, I was a little bit concerned um, of obviously a different different way of life for him, if you like, in terms yeah. of match days. Um, but Dean was like, look, that's my worry, not yours. You've explained everything about the club. I've heard nothing but good things. And I just said to him, I mean, the lad never met, uh, never missed a training session. Mixed in with the lads, you know, went out on Christmas dues with them. Do you know what I mean? He was very much part and parcel of the club. But, you know, as I've said, like other clubs, um, with the pandemic that's here, everyone's got to cut their cloth accordingly. And it's, and to be honest, the only reason we've, we've, parted ways is just that we need to make some savings yeah and um, no other reason than that you know we left on good terms Dean was um, understood our position which I expected him to do and um, you know we still keep in touch now so who knows but um, I wish him nothing the best he's got a lovely family he's got a, a son who's just turned one and um, I think he's going into the media game with Milton Keynes and, and coaching so I think he's got desires there so um, I wish him nothing but the very best. No, brilliant, brilliant. I mean, when you when you boys manage to bring in someone odd like D, like you say, coming out of a pro club, that must have gave the whole club a massive lift and a spring in the boys' step to think, you know, 
the gaffers have brought in someone of this quality, you know, and obviously the intentions were clear, you know, what you wanted to do with the league and the bars, etc. You know, it must have gave the boys a real, real lift. Who, who was someone like that you brought in, really? Yeah, he was, um, we, we didn't require him from the league perspective. I don't, and I don't mean that in a bullish way, but we were sitting pretty anyway and, and doing well. He was very much brought in with the VARs in mind. Um, we thought he would be, you know, that jigsaw as, as the rounds went into the later stages, to be maybe that, that bit of quality that would see us through. Um, and unfortunately, well, we got to last 16, which was a record for the club, but we couldn't, you know, quite on the day, we weren't quite at it. Roxham got a deserved win and, um, you know, we went out. So, um, but no, you know, his, as I say, in training, the boys watch him in training, his touch was ridiculous. Um, but as I say, mixed in and, um, yeah, it does, does give, you know, we've definitely had more people come down to the club when Dean was there. I was going to say, I bet, I bet the crowd absolutely loved him being there, no doubt. Yeah, and, and he embraced them, you know, happy. He, he, we asked him to, like on a match day, him and Muzzy would get there early um, and they'd do a half an hour with 20 kids. Oh, OK, you know? cool. Yeah. So, um, so we're, big, we're big into that because um, obviously, you know, we, we had a guy called Hogan put a, a book together, just photographs, you know, from supporters to players to goals, etc. And one of my favourite photos is Josh Mayhew sliding on his knees to 20 kids. And it's the expression on their faces, you know, that it's like, oh my God, sort of things. And um, that's why we need the kids in there. That's why under 16s get in for nothing, because um, it's vitally important. And, you know, get them there. And then, you know, it, it keeps the momentum going for the club because they get bugged, you know, and, and they buy the buy the shirts and to go into your local ads. And all of a sudden you see someone walking out in the stone market top, like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So he, he, as I said, it was big for the club and Dean and Brett, holy. So, so with, with, with regards to, like you say, you know, the bars are rocks and etc. Did who would you say was your toughest game against um, in the league? You know, the one that caused you the most headaches. Then, um, I would say. Newmarket away is always a tough game. Yeah. Uh, and Mildenhall, I think we had... Did we draw twice at Mildenhall, Muzz? Yeah. You know, and they were real tight games. So yeah. They they came down, I think, that's it. So we knew they were going to be a tough, tough opposition, and they proved that. Um, in this league, there's no unforgiving. You know, you see teams get beat out of the blue, and, and that's the way it is, and it's all about consistency. And that's one thing we bang on about. You know, we get one game over with us done. You know, even if we're drawn or we've lost the game, we can't change it. But what can we do next time round to, to try not to, you know, or try to bounce back? And every time we did drop points, it, we then went back on a run. That's why we found ourselves where we did. Excellent. So I, I, I think uh, from memory as well, Stone Market have got a, a very good. Uh, well-run, structured uh, youth setup, and you've got quite a number of youth teams for, for the future, really. Yeah, I think they go down to under sevens, and all the way up to under eighteens. So, yeah. with without doubt, and and this is why you know we get mascots there and and that sort of thing, and we get the kids to come into the change rooms so they can see that have the pictures done there and and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, there is, there is a good feed of feeder of youth I mean a couple of young lads that did well in the reserves last year have been training with us in pre-season um, uh, they're only 17 aren't they Muzz 17, 18 yeah, yeah. Um, and it's quite interesting they're with a group of you know players that have played higher and, and they're doing well they're not interrupting the flow with the training or anything they're holding their own and that can only help their development so you know that's what we're trying to do I suppose, Paul, you know, you share, you share the same sort of view, obviously, really. Yeah, it's exciting, to be fair, when you see, like I said, we've had Aidan and Alex have come into, into training and, and um, they, they've got a little bit of a buzz about them. You can see they've got quality, but it's how they, it's how they interlope into the group 
and how they really just like I say how they come on as a character and I think that's a responsibility that we should we should always hold dear to our hearts that you know we've probably all been in the same position whether it be a in thrown into a football team that you're not quite sure about or into a job role or whatever and you're always successful because the people around you and and I think it's our job now to nurture the well definitely the two we've got and any more that decide to come through so it, um, Stowe have always been like I say very good with their youth setups and the, and the lads that they pull through yeah and I see we've also been sort of off the pitch um, I see that um you know, the foundations at grassroots that you um, look up, you know, Parker's pictures are looked after the surface. Um, a lot of you've had some major projects sort of happened in lockdown and uh, bits and pieces. Well, the, the club um, were fortunate enough because, like they say, with the, the investment that they've got, that they started um, on the pitch slightly earlier. And um, they also had uh, the build base money that they, they won. So, to be honest with you, again, it's a bit that enthusiasm and that desire off the pitch. Uh, they've they've cracked on and they've made quite a lot of changes within the club, and it looks really good. And like I said, with them doing that off the pitch, it's our responsibility to make sure it's right on the pitch. So we, I think, both sides drive each other quite nicely, and and Mr. Andrews at the helm uh, guides it nicely along, really. Yeah, uh, just at that point, Sean. I was... Sorry, yeah, carry, carry so, on, Rick. Well, I was going to say, Sean, at that point, I'd like to thank Tom Morley because he's been one of one of well the biggest investor by some some way, and he enjoys what he watches. It's his, you know, he comes and enjoys the football and likes the family feel of it, and um, he's believed in me and believed in the club. Um, so I'd just like to thank him for that because you know we we said three years ago if we could sort the pitch out, it would be massive for us. And it was his investment that allowed us to do that and continues to allow us to do, make improvements. So, I suppose people like himself and, you know, volunteers and that, I suppose, you know, obviously football wouldn't happen in the first place, would it? Exactly. And, you know, with people down the club, I mean, it's interesting. So the COVID's happening, obviously, the club, the club has suffered financially in terms of bar money and takings and that. But they've not sat back, you know, they've, they've had some money in the pot. They've done new kitchen. We had the build base money that was doing bits for us, made improvements in the hall, made, you know, so they've got on with it. Um, you could easily sit back and just, you know, um, be down and downbeat about it. But if anything, that three months has given them an opportunity to do lots in the clubhouse that they would like to have done, but never could because obviously it's being used. So hopefully when the supporters come back, They'll see some significant changes and um, they'll see what we're trying to do. But as you, as you say, without the volunteers as well, it would, well, the club wouldn't, the club wouldn't survive. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and that's the sort of message I get from every club I speak to in non-league, with what we respect, what, uh, whatever division or league they're in or whatever standard. You know, they all say the same thing. Volunteers are the heartbeat of the club. And without that sort of thing, football doesn't really happen. Um, but, you know, I even, I even see on social media, I think you've got a new website, you know, little things like that. You've also got um, uh, a new match day entrance as well. So, you know, like you say, the club are really, you know, giving the place a, a good bit of TLC everywhere. Yeah, a bit like um, I've had tea with my missus over the last three months and, and do stuff around the house and... Um, Stone Market have done the same there. So, um, no, that, to be fair, like I said, we've been down there a few times and, um, yeah, it's got a lovely fresh feel to it and, and hats off to, to everybody down there. They're a terrific bunch and um, they've worked hard. So, you, you, you've got, again, you've just got to respect everything that they're doing. So, with regards to the season being not very far away, as we all know, um, just for those that don't know, who have you got in pre-season fixtures then for the boys? Uh, so first of all, we uh, at the moment as it stands, we kick off with Great Yarmouth away on the fifteenth, which was a was a one that was for the fans, to be honest with you, more than more than the players. Um, but that's but that's still a fixture that's gonna gonna go through. Um, we then move on to Soham away. 
We then move on to Felix Stowe away. And then um, Rick sorted out yesterday. We've got King Kings Lynn as well, just in between there. So we've got we've got one more to one more friendly to to confirm. But we've got like I say with with, with that lineup, sort of will lead us into the season um, as the management team want to see the lads progress progress and start the season flying. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, you know, with, with some of those uh, big names in there, but to have a team against you like Kings Lynn, that will obviously give give you gents a very good idea where you are come uh, the first weekend in uh, September the start of the season then. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I hope so. It's always quite tough, isn't it, Rick? Yeah, people look at pre-season and um, they start pe judging people on results, which is which is crazy, I find, because obviously you're different players um, react differently to friendlies, as do managers and team selection. Um, so, yes, it's nice to, to, to sort of hit the ground running, but also you should be using it as a time to just hone in your uh, technical abilities and your formations and just making sure you're right for the first, first week, really, going into the season. So, it is quite funny how people get hung up on their pre-season results. And, 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 I, and, I, and I guess, Rick, obviously, to attract someone of Kings Lynn status now, to, to give state, you know, they give, come give you, you boys a friendly, obviously um, shows the reputation that you boys have got, clearly, even for a friendly, more respect to a friendly. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a nice, nice recognition. I know Backy there well. Backy was doing the Kings Lynn reserves when, when he was put up against me. We always got on, kept in touch. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's nice, you know, and we've, we've finally got that one over the line and that a prestigious one for us as a club. And um, hopefully there'll be more to come in the, in the years to come. So we're looking forward to it. As Paul said, uh, it's just a case of uh, pre-season getting, you know, minutes and legs, look at different formations, look at different positions players can play and the results uh, in material, to be fair. So... Um, but yeah, the good ones to have. We're pleased, you know. Felix will be a tough test as well, and obviously they've got some Mexico players there, so you know they'll be keen to show, you know, show us that they want to be there. But looking forward to it. Excellent. Is that at Stowe or is that at Kings Lynn, gents? At Stowe. Okay, cool. I, I, has that date been released yet, or is that to be released? It's twenty second of August. Literally been confirmed this morning. Right, okay, excellent. Well, there's a nice little bit of exclusive stuff for us on uh, <laughs> on on, uh, on Zoom. And then, and you speak about um, the prestigious side of things, uh, Rick and Paul. Um, was it the Suffolk Cup you got to the semi-finals of um, before the pandemic hit? And I guess, obviously, you know, the idea was to bring the Suffolk Cup back to Stowe, obviously. I think for me the it's that was probably the one that's more most disappointing because that gave us an opportunity to play Needham, who, right, okay. as you know, who are two year, um, two leagues above us. Yeah, and you know Stowe fans have only seen Needham reserves at ours over the last seven years, so um, it would have been nice just to again just to see where we're at, and it would have been nice for both sets of fans because I'm sure neutral ground, I reckon you would have got a thousand plus to that game easily. So. Um, that's that's obviously disappointing, but I mean there are rumours that that's still not been ruled out. I think. I oh, okay. Still, I still mm. think there's a possibility that uh, Suffolk FA may try to finish those those four fixtures, two semi-finals and final. But I mean that was touted six weeks ago, but things change a lot, don't they? So I don't know where we're at. But if it happens, great. If it doesn't, you know, then obviously we'll try to do as well again. I think. I'm Second year we got to the semis, so um, it, it, again it shows our development because you know progressing to later stages of competition shows that you're going in the right direction. And I suppose Paul, you sort of share the same sort of view as that as uh, as Rick really for the the Suffolk Cup, unfortunately. I I was um, I was looking forward to Rick being there for a semi final this year would be nice. Um, <laughs> Only, only for the fact that it, I got blamed for the loss last year on some uh, decisions that I made. So um, it would have been nice yeah, to have him around. And he does have a special dance sometimes when um, when when we win. <laughs> but, uh, 
I, I, can't, I, I can't share that sort of information with you just yet, but um, yeah, no, it, it was um, it's disappointing uh, again. Like I said, it's just a case of um, if you know if we, if, if Suffolk FA decide that they would like to pursue that and, and still want it on, obviously we'll give it our best shot. Why don't you give um, Sean a rendition of that song in Portugal you like? Yeah, it's um, it only sort of after a couple of beers comes out. So um, just that, one more. Yeah, it's just me singing and you dancing. I reckon we could take it on <laughs> sort of take our careers away from football. Do you think? Uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I guess obviously, you know, like we touched on earlier, you know, yourself and the lads, you know, the league is obviously what, what um, every, you know, yourselves and everybody else wants to achieve. But obviously with the Cups, you're going to be back and you're going to give it the same crack. And um, basically you want to win, you basically so you're going to win everything, basically, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, the, the league is the main thing because the club's never played that level before. But that would, you know, be a history made for the club. And I think the club now, with infrastructure in place, the level of support they're getting, I think they deserve that. And um, that they'd be well suited in that league. So um, that's the aim. Cups, obviously, you know, they, they come and go. And wherever we play, we'll, we'll put our, you know, strong team out and we'll try to win as much as we can but um, the league has always been the main focus and always will be yeah I totally echo that and again you've just got to be uh, sort of tactically astute of where we are at that point in time when the cup games come along to see where we are and, and just keep a focus really it's um, I think it was a couple of years ago when we were going great guns in, in things and I think um we come up a little bit short and that was probably because we were we were trying to fire too many bullets in in everything and it, we you know maybe have been our downfall in the end a little bit but we can only deal you know deal with what's in front of us at that that week before any any games so. excellent so i mean obviously you know seven and four years respectively between you um obviously realistically in five years where would you like to personally see the club they, oh, the club or me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I nearly answered Vegas. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see the club in um, in a s strong, solid uh, foundation in the league or two above. That's what I'd like, and and to be, you know, to be where you like the Berry Town, your Sudbury's your Needhams, your Laystons, that's, that's what we need to be, that's where the club needs to be and um, I think if they're fortunate enough to go up to those leagues and I think they've got every chance of staying, staying there. Yeah, agree. I thought Rick was going to say Caesar's Palace straight away, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, again, I think Rick's hit the nail on the head. That's that's what we've got our aim aim to be. And um, I've always said it. And you know, respect to these to the higher clubs within the region. Um, they do a fantastic job, and to and to maintain what they do, that's all we can aspire to to be. And then hopefully little improvements. And we always want to overtake rivals. Really, that's what it's all about. So, yeah. Um, but the, the the club needs to be solid foundations and making sure that um, we're moving in the right direction in the correct method. Well, to be fair, gents, you know, like I say, with all the um, youth teams and the pitch maintenance and the TLC around the ground and bits and pieces, it definitely sounds like it's uh, going in the right direction. But um, just to kind of put you boys on the spot, just a fraction, what would be your, sort of, not necessarily your best game for Stone, what, was your, what has been your best <laughs> moment Stone. <laughs> There's apart been a few. From, apart from James Scowcroft giving you a uh, stick on uh, Twitter last night, that's besides the point. <laughs> I, I think he'd had uh, more than his quota of Stella for the week, and um, he, got a bit, he got a bit carried away. Um, uh, uh, 
I think for me, even though we lost the game, uh, rocks them away in the bars. And the reason I say that is if you would have said to me, seven stroke, eight years ago, first home game, 32, somebody watching your team seven, eight years later, you'd have a thousand plus crowd. Yeah. I would have said, Chucks. so for, for me, it, it would be that game, even though we didn't win it. We've had a few absolute belters, haven't we, Rick, to be fair, yeah. since um, it's def definitely in my four years there. So it's really hard to, to pinpoint one. Um, we beat, I think Woodbridge was 7-0, seven, seven wasn't it? That was a good yeah. day. Uh, the Long Melford comeback when we were 2-0 down um, this that season was, was one hell of a feeling. Um, yeah, God, there's been some... Good I think Coggleshall away, Muzz, when we won the league in yeah. Division 1. Because we had to go there and do a job. And to be fair to Coggleshall, we played them earlier in the season, January, I think it was. They were 2-0 up and the ref called the pitch off, uh, called the game off because uh, yeah, the pitch was frozen. Um, right. Which was really hard. You know, if I was in their position, I would have been very frustrated by it. Um, and we then went there and turned them over 2-1 which saw us win a league title first time in the club's history. So that particular game, it was such a big game for us and we performed so well on the day. Uh, so yeah, I, remember, so maybe I remember it well, Rick. You sent me there in the week and then I said, do you want me on the bench at the weekend? You went, no, nah, it's all right, mate, you've done your job. <laughs> <laughs> Treat you mean to keep them keen, Muzz. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose that uh, that's, that that works, doesn't it? I I must admit, you know, like I say, I I do, I do go to rocks and I film the well, I try and film everyone I possibly can get to, uh, really. But for me, one team I was impressed with um, from a neutral point was uh, Stanway Rovers. For me, I found them very physical. I found them very well organised. Um, I remember filming them against Roxham midweek at Roxham, um, and before Grant Holt could get the ball, he had three players around him. They were they pretty in some ways. I like I say they actually kind of bullied Roxham. I think you don't really. I'm sure you'll agree. You don't see many teams sort of do that to, to Roxham. I just wondered how you boys fared against the teams like Stanway that were very physical and um, for me really well organised. Really. Yeah, I think I think at home we had a a two one win, which they scored early in the second half. And to be fair, we had a weather a storm, but we defended extremely well, which we had done all season. Went to their place. I know they had a few players out, and we won three nil. Um, but sometimes the physicality can get the better of them, and when you don't have the biggest of squads, you know suspensions and that can be a killer. No, I think when they played us, they may have had one suspended or two and then one or two injuries and then obviously us struggling. But they, to be fair, they were well organised. Um, but it's, it's a fine, fine line of controlling the aggression yeah. at that tempo and, and keeping your players on the pitch. So, but yeah, they, they chased us all season, to be fair. And it was only the latter stages when possibly suspensions that kicked in that they fell away a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed the encounters against them. You always know that um, they're going to be set up well. Um, total respect to, the, to their manager. I think he, he was a tenacious player as well. So you kind of know that the way that they're, they're, they're going to play. Um, and we knew a few of their players, of course. So it was always a case of um, you know, mind over matter a little bit. Look, we know what we're going to get, but let's deal with that and punish them when we can punish them with the quality we've got. And, and we did that day, um, especially away, Rick, because we had uh, JJ was on the bench. It sort of it sort of epitomised everything that well we, we say about the squad. And Rick echoes time after time that we we changed things around and, and brought people in, and they and the job that was done was superb over there. Yeah, we we were strong over there in the away game. Second half in particular it was a bit of attack v defence, so it could have been worse for them. But um, yeah, they're, they're a tough team. I expect them to be up there this season. Well, I was about to say, Rick. I'm guessing, obviously, you know, I mean, obviously, it depends who comes and goes, etc. 
But for yourself and uh, and you, Paul, I'm guessing Broxham, Norwich United, Stanway, the usual suspects that are going to be um, sort of the chase of that, that, that are going to be after you, basically. Mildenhall, especially, and Newmarket, especially. Yeah. Shani um, at Newmarket has done a very good job there last year. I think, um, obviously, he's got his group together again. So it's another year of him, you know, similar to us. Uh, they are very strong at home. I think they picked up quite a few wins at home. And he'll be looking to improve um, their away record. And if he does that, then, yeah, 100% they're going to be out. And, and Mildenhall gave us two tough games last season. So I expect them to again be um uh chasing us or sorry on our heels hopefully we're in front um but same with Milton, ricky cornish has been there a year now and he so you know ricky's done a very good job so there'll be a new group again so uh, i think it'll be good i think it'll be a, a tight league i'll throw another name in now i think goulston will be one of that sort of you know you get a team yeah, that's surprised sure. yeah surprise people because I've kept, again kept an eye on things that are going on and, and, and they seem to be sort of having a sort of a fresh look on things and going for it again with the players they've signed so there's all there's always sort of one or two teams that are, you know come up and, and decide that they're going to have another stab at things and I think they could be you know Long Melford had a really good season last year and they you know they were holding on you know in, in decent positions and they fell away shortly at the uh, before we sort of broke up for the pandemic but yeah I've got I've got I think Goulston will be this year yeah now it's interesting you, you say that uh, Paul because we you know I get on with Scott and Rick ever so well you know Carl has always invited you know I've always been welcome into Emerald Park and everything else and I, I went there just before the pandemic hit and it was Goulston against Walsh and Lee Willow in a midweek game and uh, I think in the result, uh, Goulston won six nil. Yeah, four five six nil. And I, 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 I remember I that. Uh, I just couldn't uh, believe it, so to speak. But like you say, it's you know they've started to get um, themselves in order. You know they, they're laying their intentions out, and yeah, you know like you say with some of the players they've signed. Um, I can't remember the lad's name they got from Lowestoft. Um, that's it. Yeah, and. Yeah, like you say, Paul, to be fair, um, best, of, best of luck, German, tend to a dark horse, I guess. Yeah, I think, like I said, you've got to keep keep your eyes open and fully respect what other people are doing. They might not be shouting about it, um, but, you you know, there's always teams, well, there is every team in that league, unless you prepare right, you're going to come unstuck, and I don't care what group of players you've got. And we all know that, like I say, that hard work and that hard, hard graft comes before talent because, you know, talent, you can have as much talent if you've got no heart, that ain't going to go very far. So I think, like I say, there's a there's respect to every team. I just sort of, like I said, I looked at Goulston and um, seen what they've been doing. Now, I mean, I mean, you say respect to every team and, you know, obviously rightly so. Um, but just to finish on, gents, you know, what would be your message from you both to the teams that, um, in the rest of the league and the Suffolk Cup and the FA and the FA Vars coming up? Just that when we when we meet, we um, we hope to give you a competitive game and may the best team win. And um, buy us a beer afterwards when we'll go mess either. <laughs> You'll have to ask Scurry to come down and repay that favour then. You, you don't know him very well, then. <laughs> <laughs> I only know him very well from when I was at the bottom of the North Stand when he was uh, playing at Portman Road many moons ago. So, uh, obviously, you know him better than me, then. <laughs> didn't, you used to click, click, didn't you used to click the balls that you put over the North Stand, Mars? Oh, if I did, I'd still be running for him. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, gents, you know, I really appreciate... You come on, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I'm sure I'll get down to Stowe and uh, finally meet you both in person with a camera on the sideline. And um, all the best for the season, gents. Appreciate that. Very welcome anytime. Thank Thanks you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, appreciate it. See you soon. All the best.